Literally Google demonic transference and the first result you'll get is a Wikipedia page for succubus. A demon or supernatural entity in folklore in human form that appears in dreams to seduce men. It really is that straightforward and Needy even explained this to the audience. The result may still be attained but the demon will forever reside in the soul of the victim. She must forever feed on flesh to sustain the demon. Okay. She's eating boys. But somehow the marketing missed the memo. Let's back up. Jennifer's Body is a 2009 horror movie written and produced by Diablo Cody. The film was directed by Karen Kusama, starring Amanda Seyfried and Megan Fox. The film is about a toxic friendship between best friends Jennifer and Needy that comes to a point when Jennifer is assaulted and accidentally possessed. The film was a box office flop, but 10 years later, people have started talking about it again. Again, because what started as a passion project was sacrificed to the wrong demographic and the marketing and test screenings of the film concealed its actual power which years later added a level of meaning to the film that was quite ironic. As I've mentioned, Jennifer's Body was produced and written by Diablo Cody, a screenwriter at the time famous for Juno, a film that won her an Oscar for the best screenplay. But it also opened doors for her and she found herself in the unique position that the next film she was able to create could be a passion project. It could be really whatever she wanted. And so she chose horror. Cody had always wanted to do a horror movie. She is a huge horror fan. And with this Oscar, now she had the opportunity to take a risk. So although later she did admit that she never thought this film would be successful, it was a passion project and she started writing a film that was focused around a female story, a female friendship, and well, the idea of girls eating boys. <laughs> Cody said the script flowed out of her. She knew it was gonna be quite bizarre and have strange moments, but it was also very purposeful. And Megan Fox was always the ideal choice for the character of Jennifer, the quick-witted teenager who was attacked by an indie boy band and sacrificed to Satan. But whoopsie, she wasn't the virgin they assumed. So instead, demonic transference takes place and poor Jennifer becomes a possessed teen who must feast on her peers to maintain her glow and Oh yeah, her health. Megan was the perfect choice because of her mystique. There was no one else in Hollywood that had the same impressive secrecy around who they truly were, especially off the carpet. At the time, Megan was dealing with a lot of hate in Hollywood and a lot of anxiety around this, which actually made her a really quiet person off screen and in turn made the mystery about her and the rumors that much louder. But we'll come back to this because I know you're here for the meaning. And first, we've got to talk about the film's intention. As mentioned, Jennifer's Body is a female-focused film about a toxic friendship, but behind this, it was actually unknowingly inspired by an internal struggle. Diablo Cody's real name is Brooke, and before she changed her name to Diablo, she was a quiet person who was actually seeking a lot of attention and validation. As Brooke, she was insecure and quiet, so when she changed her name to Diablo and started doing things out of character, she received attention for what she said was the first time in her life. People were finally paying attention attention to what she had to say. But the more attention she got, the more she would change. And then the chase of this attention seeking behavior became quite toxic and she would reflect on herself and who she'd become. If you haven't put it together yet, the character of Needy is Brooke and the character of Jennifer is her alter ego, Diablo, which is the Spanish word for devil, which of course, she's a demon, she's a succubus. And I love reflecting about this when I think about the end of the film because we know that Needy gets bitten by Jennifer and obviously Needy survives. And she explains in the film that when a person gets bitten by a demon and survives, some of the power can transfer into them. So although in the end, Needy kills Jennifer, she takes a piece of her on to live. Much like Diablo when she decided after Jennifer's body to take a step back from the vicious cycle of fame and attention. And that did happen after this film. Because of the backlash of this film, she had a bite and it got very vicious, but she was able to take that and move on with some power because you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Although that is the intention of the film and Diablo Cody didn't know at the time that she was really writing about herself until she reflected later, uh, there are a lot of subtext in this film and a lot of people draw different meanings from it. So let's unpack some of them. 
Of course, we've already spoken about toxic friendships. If I had to say Jennifer's Body was any two films, I'd probably say Ginger Snaps meets Mean Girls. The film at its core is a comedy horror and it mimics the toxic schoolyard behavior in Mean Girls while also showing the dark side of Ginger Snaps, especially with their almost sister-like relationship. Sisters practically. Yeah, I know not all of the scenes are sister-like, but I mean, they did mention this. The film also opens with the lines, Hell is a teenage girl, and with the title Jennifer's Body, of course, the film is looked at by some as the female experience. Being a victim to the male gaze, the power struggle, men thinking you're easy if you dress a certain way. Look like this, okay, there's always that girl. They look to show it off, but they do not give it up. Well, I can see like your womb. And if you're not, you gotta be the geeky girl. There's a lot that reflects on this perspective because hell isn't just a teenage girl, hell is being a teenage girl. And then it gets dark very dark. Another theory of this film starts with this scene of the van door closing. This struck a nerve with a lot of people, including me. The most intense part of the film is the reveal when Jennifer finally tells Needy what happened to her the night when she disappeared with the boys from the band. What we see is an occult ritual, but for some viewers, what they see is assault and a metaphor for its after effect. Jennifer does ask in the van, Are you guys rapists? Oh God, I hate girls. After the event, she does not communicate with Needy and then blows her off that night as if nothing happened. She acts out of character. And of course we all deal with grief and trauma differently, but this also adds to the theory that the ritual was actually a metaphor for common sexual assault. But Megan Fox has her own explanation for this scene and what she got out of it or really what she put into it. She said even when she was acting the scene, it felt like a metaphor for her being sacrificed to big Hollywood studios. She felt like they were quite literally sacrificing her body, regardless of how she felt mentally. Her pleads for help in these scenes were real, as she couldn't trust anyone she worked with on the big film sets. If you know about her history with the Me Too movement, she has had a really tough time in Hollywood. No one ever protected her or had her best interest at heart. In a way, they just wanted to use Jennifer's body. I know this has gotten really dark for a comedy horror, but if you thought it couldn't get any darker, What's in a name? Jennifer's body comes from the whole song of the same name. The song has so much subtext and it is about violence against women, but no one really knows the true meaning. There are a lot of theories behind it. Some of the lyrics really do mirror what we were talking about before, where it was Diablo versus Brooke and her relationship with herself. I'm gonna read you a couple of lines because this is bang on. My better half has bitten me. It's bettering you, it's bettering me. Sleeping with my enemy, myself, myself. Diablo Cody said she was drawn to the song because it was just so dark and creepy, just like a horror movie. But other people have claimed that the song is about Colleen Stan, which if you don't know her story, it is insane. Uh, it is probably the darkest true crime thing I've ever read. You know what I, I spoke about recently watching the movie, The Girl in the Box, it's the same case. And in these lyrics, they do talk about a box and putting a woman back in there. So that's where people get this idea. It's also claimed that the movie, The Pakispi Tapes, takes a lot of inspiration from that true life case. But it's crazy to think that that could be the song that Jennifer's body got its name from as well. <laughs> But why has this film gained so much interest now? All the theories and analysis, well, plainly it's because the film was failed by the marketing on its inception and it paid the ultimate price. So let's pick up where we started off, succubus. <laughs> As I said earlier, if you Google demonic transference, which is what Needy talks about in the film, the first thing that pops up is a succubus. But for some reason, the marketing missed the memo. And when Cody was working with the marketing team and asked them what they had in mind for the marketing of Jennifer's body, they replied with three words, and I am not joking. Megan Fox hot. And just like that, the film was slapped with the purpose to make certain demographics drool. So they created posters like this instead of posters like this. I made this, it's not great, but you know what I mean. But how did the posters even end up like this? Well, <laughs> that is 
a story. We know that the film was intended to be a strange offbeat comedy horror focused on the female experience and that was always the intention of the film and the demographic it was meant to be pointed at. But because the big studios misunderstood the film and also Megan's key demographic which is actually younger females and not men as they assumed, they decided to aim it towards young males. Marketing filled the test screening with part Juno fans and part younger men and their reaction? More boobs. That was actually a comment they got you know, some great feedback. No one went in there expecting Megan to show up like this and vomit all over the floor. I don't know about you, but I think these days we would all be so hyped to see a star go from having such a pigeon-toed career to vomiting on the floor. Maybe, that's just a horror thing I think though. And if that isn't horrifying enough, the data was collected and taken seriously, which is why we ended up with posters like this. Megan also recalls that when her and Seyfried were doing the famous kissing scene, they were aware it could be misconstrued for marketing. And I have to say, I was pretty horrified to learn that this kiss made up 50% of one of the initial trailers. 50% of a trailer. Trailers go for, you know, one to two and a half minutes sometimes. 50% of that was them kissing. The film was never marketed for who it was directed at and who it was made for, and so it flopped because people weren't expecting what they got when they went in for this and they came out with this. This left the film to fall to the wayside, but like us horror fans, at the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> we love scooping up something and making a cult classic out of it. And it wasn't long before Jennifer's body finally found the demographic it was meant for. And we realized we had totally let this one go for no reason, just because of the damn marketing. And that's why we're hearing about it so much more today because finally it's getting the attention it deserves and it's really serving a purpose and has a deeper meaning for a lot of people in horror, including the LGBT community because obviously Jennifer goes both ways. The film has turned into a huge cult classic and we can see by the theories it truly means so much to the audience. And in a strange way, the marketing adds another layer of irony. The film was rejected for not being enough, for not being hot enough, for not fitting in with standards. But what can I say? Hell is a teenage girl. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, please do. I do two videos every single week talking about horror movies, talking about thrillers, giving you lots of recommendations. I can't wait to see you very soon. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye friends. Ooh.